what is intersectionality? Intersectionality, I tried to explain, this was a kind of discussion piece I had with Nivedita Menon. So we are good friends, but we disagree a lot. And I think that's the best way to be friends. Um, okay, so intersect the theory of intersectionality is something that came out of black feminism. And the simplest articulation which I used also there is that all the women are white, all the blacks are men, but some of us are brave. Which is a way of saying that a lot of feminism a lot of the women's movement in the US was effectively a white women's movement, mm. was addressing their problems. Mm. A lot of the black movement, the African American movement, had the primary ident primary sort of subject was black men. Yes. Okay, So black women disappear at these intersections. So intersectionality is about the people who disappear. Mm. Because they're neither, they're neither here, they're neither there. Right? They get lost in between. And the reason that's important, the reason why that matters, is that black women are, you see, the, the common language we think of is when we think of, is we say double treble. Black women are doubly oppressed. Mm -hmm. They're trebly oppressed. Dalit women are trebly. But the problem with that language is that double, treble, and so on simply means more of the same. It means white women have a bad time, black women have an even worse time. It's just more of the same. You're just putting a, like, making it like a little bit worse. Whereas it actually could be quite different. Hmm. It could be qualitatively different. The kind of oppression that it's not just worse, it's actually different, hmm. right? And that difference is not understood. So, and the way to look at that is to say that black women are not the addition of black men and white women. Then it becomes more clear hmm. that if you were to do it, because we usually say add, add one, take one axis, take another axis, add the two and you'll get the product. But that doesn't work, right? So intersectionality at its best is naming a problem of how those who actually are, in some sense, caught between both these ways of thinking get lost and need a different kind of analysis, not just an additive analysis, right? Mm -hmm. I think that some aspect of that could be used in our context as well, where even though, even though, and I'll be discussing a little bit of that today in, in the discussion on the Uniform Civil Code and so on that I'm going to talk about today, um, even though in the Indian context we might say historically there has never been a simple women's movement. Mm. The social reform movement has been complex, it's had uh, some parts of it have been somewhat narrow like the anti-Sati campaign and so on was very narrowly focused on you know colonial specific. Bengal, specific women of that class and caste who were the ones who were being pushed into the pyre. Mm. Uh, widow remarriage again was narrowly those upper castes where they don't permit re widow remarries, mm. whereas middle and lower castes were remarrying oh, yes. because they're, you know, Jats for instance remarry sometimes in ways they don't probably like, they marry the, de the Devar or somebody else yeah, yeah. because their labor system. is, because their labor is a different system because their labor is needed, mm. right? So, so we can say that in our history too there have been ways in which we have had narrow single axis kinds of, though because of the very thing I'm going to talk about later this evening, the fact that women were seen as marked by their religious identity. Personal laws were created Hindu, Muslim, etc. Right? So there was a sense in which women are not simply only women, but women are members of a community. So there was a more complex kind of dynamic at work in our history, which has meant that it isn't so simple, at least one could say, compared to maybe, though, though I would say even in the US, that it was never simply a white women's movement. Mm. The white women's movement grew out of the anti-slavery movement. It's actually been a race and gender movement from the beginning, and a lot of, co lot of conflicts in that process. So the point is that when we have conflicts, the people who lose out are the gains, similarly the ones who are caught in between. So we have the Shah Banu case in India in the 1980s, Muslim woman looking for maintenance and caught in between the crosshairs of having to either be a Muslim or have to be a woman. So that would be an example of intersectionality. We would need a different kind of analysis for her. We cannot simply say, oh poor woman, she has it even worse than Hindu women. She's doubly oppressed because she's a Muslim. Mm. No, it's qualitatively different. In fact, Muslim law has contract for marriage rather than sacrament. So you have to start from a very different beginning point. Mm. Much more interesting beginning point, in fact, than Hindu marriage. Mm. Okay, so that's the, so intersectionality offers you a chance to name a problem, to be alert to a problem. It's not a solution to a problem. I think that's what's gone wrong with intersectionality now, is that it's been institutionalized, whether in, we must, in, the, in, in the US, it's like women, gender, sexuality, queer, intersectionality. You've covered all your bases. 
it doesn't work like that, right? In India, I think intersectionality has been much more used in NGO contexts. So you make sure you're covering the Dalit and the this and the that and the other. You, 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 you actually trivialize it by doing that. Hmm? So institutionally, it may be, be getting flattened. Everybody is multiple, we say, multiple identities. We all have multiple identities. That's a very lazy way of speaking because those, how do, is opening up a question a problem? How do those multiple identities, are they always working all the time? Are we a little bit of everything? You know, I mean, how does it act, actually pan out? We have to think that through much more rigorously. So it's useful in those ways, it seems to me. And our context will no doubt have its differences. For us, a communal context, um, a very vitiated caste context, our caste equations are more complicated than, say, a race question, mm. which is color and white. We have backward castes, we have Dalit castes, we have middle castes, we have small numbers of upper castes, all of whom are in a relationship of inequality with each other. And sometimes the worst inequalities are near the bottom. So the Jats in states like Haryana are the biggest oppressors of the Dalits. But they will also feel that they are somehow losing out vis-a-vis -vis the upper castes in Delhi. And that's why they want reservations. So you see, it's a more messy picture in our context. And I'm not trying to say that there's some magic key. Let's not turn intersectionality into a kind of magic key that will somehow solve it. It can be uh, alerting us to what more work we need to do theoretically, analytically, politically, to bring those who get lost back into the, back into the picture.